Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Nehemiah chapter 4. We're going to be starting verse 15 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we start here in verse 15, remember, we're uh, last lesson and this lesson here, we're dealing with uh, verses 11 through 23 of this chapter that the Jews are preparing for battle. And we continue with that thought in mind. And we, we're going to read verses 15 to 18 and uh, see what happens here. And it says, And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to nothing, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants worked in the work, and the others half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which builded on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laded, every one uh, with, with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand he held a weapon. For the builders, every one had, had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Now, Without swinging a sword or shooting an arrow, God gave these Jews the victory. And how did he do it? Because God answered their prayer back in verse 6. And he brought their conspiracy to nothing in verse 15. What we just wrote in verse 15. This allowed the Jews to be able to get back to work on the wall, but this time precautions needed to be made. When you know, when a backslidden Christian returns to the Lord and starts to build themselves up in the Word of God, that that Christian needs to approach the building process as not only continuing to build up their souls, but also as a defender of the wall. They need to build and to defend at the same time. Not only, not only do, it's not just uh, backslidden Christians who are returning to God, but we ourselves, we need to be continuously guarding the walls of God's word that he has built in our heart, guarding these walls with his strength, not in our strength, but in his strength, praying and humbling ourselves to God that we can, that we can, that this wall, the wall of the word of God's word around our heart is, is built up and, and watched over against the enemy. But this is true with every single Christian. Prayer and fellowship and faith and God's word need to, are, are, to be, are to build up the wall of our heart. These are the things that help build up the walls in our heart. And God's word is also the sword of the spirit which, which defends the wall and defends the city. So... God's word builds up is, is the wall and God's word defends the wall. To stop building and to stop defending will lead to spiritual decay. What if these Jews here built up the wall and then, you know, did nothing about it, didn't defend, didn't watch over it at all? Eventually they'd be attacked and it'd be all torn down again. Listen, don't ever disarm yourselves. Always be watching. Always be watching. The enemy is there. The enemy wants to take advantage at any time. He can use little things 
to 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 uh, attack the walls in our hearts. Now, verses 19 and 20, it says here, And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place, therefore, you hear the sound of the trumpet, then go there unto us, our God shall fight for us. Now, the work of building a spiritual heart unto God in holiness can at times seem vast and great. The hours of prayer, the hours of personal Bible study and Bible reading, the commitment to going to church or the commitment to teaching Sunday school or to feeding the elderly, those kinds of things. It seems like a long, tedious effort to serve God and to commit our, our, ourselves to this new life within us. Especially you get say, I got saved when I was 18. You know, you look at yourself and you think, well, you know, I'm 18 years old. I've got what, maybe... 50, 60 more years to live. This is going to be a long haul, this walk with God, right? And all of a sudden, the enemy can come in and, and he can whisper in your ear. You mean, you mean all that prayer, all that Bible reading? You mean every son, for the rest of your life, going to church every single Sunday? What? And, and you know, here comes here comes the voice of the enemy coming in to discourage us coming in to look at the work, the rest of the work that needs to be done on this wall, and, and, and it can look discouraging. The whole wall needs to, be, needs to be guarded because the enemy will attack at different places where he sees weaknesses. Your prayer life will be attacked. And then your friendships, by bringing in division and comparison and jealousy, a spirit of judging, then, then your church attendance will be attacked by bringing in tiredness, boredom, a critical spirit towards the pastor and towards his preaching. Oh, all these things are going to be attacked. Uh, your prayer life, your... Your, your church life, your fellowship life, going to the Bible studies, oh, this, he's going to attack them all. And he's going to bring up all kinds of reasons why you shouldn't go there. Uh, don't, you remember, don't you remember how that person looked at you at the Bible study? Right? And, and, and bringing up just something to bring in division to keep you from going there. Sometimes you will be tempted to look out beyond the wall beyond the wall to the world that is beyond. The pleasures and the riches of the world outside begin to get your guard down and to be drawn away from the work. Can you ma imagine those people on the wall as they're up there on the wall, they're guarding. Imagine them looking out into the, into the, to the distant land around Jerusalem there. Boy, isn't that nice land out there? It's wonderful. And this is what hap this is what happens to us. Sometimes we 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 get tempted to look beyond the wall and, and, and to see and, and to get our guard down. And, and we think to ourselves, why am I struggling so hard building and guarding this wall when I can when I can leave it all behind and enjoy the life outside the wall. Why, well, the grass is greener on the other side. All I have to do is get down off this wall and I can go and enjoy life outside the wall. It's much easier out there. There's, no, there's not much opposition out there. I won't get attacked. I won't have the threat of an attack out there. And we, we're, we're tempted to give up the work and to go back into the world. Because the temptation is, is the, the, the subtle temptation is, is that 
in the world, it's going to be easier for you when it's really not. The enemy attacks at all points around our wall. But God is the one who is overwatching the wall. It is he through the Holy Spirit that blows the horn and calls your attention to where the enemy is attacking. God is the one, through the Holy Spirit, God is the one who's, who is, who's alerting you that your walls are being attacked. You hear the trumpet sound in the area of your prayer, and you realize that you haven't been fervent in, as fervent in prayer as you used to. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit moves in your heart about your prayer life. And you say, you know what, that's true. I have, I have been kind of slacking off in my prayer life. You, what happened? Well, the Holy Spirit blew the trumpet and said, come on over here to your prayer life. You, you got it. It's, it's go, the wall's getting torn down. You need to build it back up again. Then you hear the trumpet sound in the area of your devotional life and you see weaknesses in that area. So you pray for God's leading to be more consistent in your devotions to God. It is the Holy Spirit who searches our hearts and knows where our weaknesses lie. And he rallies us to these places of weaknesses even before we are attacked in order to prevent an assault against our soul. Remember, the battle, the battle is the Lord's. Our job in any of these battles is to humble ourselves under his mighty hand and submit to his leading. To fight in our own strength or in our own wisdom means we lose. God wants to be our rock and our strong tower. Jesus said, Jesus said, without me, what? Ye can do nothing. Cry out to God and let the Holy Spirit guide you into repairing your wall. The Holy Spirit will always blow the trumpet and say, here's your church life. You, you've been missing church lately. You need to build that wall, part of the wall up. The enemy's attacking there. Oh yeah, that's right. Your prayer life, your church life, your fellowship life, uh, your Bible study life, the, these, these things are under attack. And then we're going to finish in verses 21 to 23. And it says here, So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning uh, until the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let every one with his servant lodge uh, within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes except that everyone put them off for washing. Now, as a Christian builds up the wall in their heart, they understand that time is very valuable to them. They must build while they, all, while they have the light. In John chapter 4, in John chapter 4, Verses, I'm sorry, John, John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. It says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. There is danger in leaving off the building. Till the day you die, 
Your soul depends upon it. Your soul depends upon you watching and praying over, over, your, over, over yourself. Watching and praying over your soul, the, the, the walls of your heart. Verse 22 says, don't leave the city vulnerable and go back to your go back to your neighboring towns. Verse 22. Likewise, at the same time said I unto the people, let everyone with his with his servant lodge where within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard unto us and labor on the day. So he's saying here, don't go, don't go home to these neighboring, neighboring villages and towns. Don't go back into the world even for a little bit, but lodge in the city. Your soul needs continuous attention and you need to be occupied with your soul's welfare. Let the walls of God's word stand guard around you in the night times of your walk with God. Be occupied with the building blocks of God's promises in, in the morning. God, God has given us great and precious promises whereby our souls can be built up and strengthened in him. In Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, it says here, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Like, like marriage, our life with God is all day long. You can't just say, well, I'll be married, you know, from six in the morning till six at night, and that's it every day. No, marriage is continuous night and day. To live within the walls implies a separation from the world outside. Are we willing to sacrifice our outside world that we may that we may gain Christ? Are we going to give ourselves to, to the word of God? Are we going to give ourselves to this walk with God? Or are we going to uh, play with the world at the same time? Do we want to go in and out of the wall, in and out of our city? You go outside the city, you go out into this world and you start playing with the things of this world. It's going to, it's going to tear your wall down. Verse 23, so neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes except that we put them off for washing. Now, the need was very urgent. The priority of their life was finishing this wall. How urgent are you in standing before God complete and mature? In Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12 says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salutes you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer. What? Why was Epaphras praying fervently for these Colossian believers in prayer? He was praying that they may stand what? Perfect or complete. It means complete. Perfect and complete in all the will of God. In all the will of God. And then 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter four, verses six and seven. And it says, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And Philippians chapter three, 
Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, listen, do we forget the, the things that are behind? Do we press toward the mark? Are we giving our life, to, are we giving our whole life uh, to this thing called Christianity, to this thing called our walk with God? Are we giving our life to the, are we selling out to the word of God? Do we believe it's true? Or do, or do we want to still play with this world? Do we still want to venture out beyond the walls of our city and go out into this world? No, the Bible says lodge in the city, stay in the city, stay in the word of God, stay in the protection around the, the word of God that the word of God has around you stay inside the word of God you're protected there as soon as you venture outside of the protection of the word of God we venture out into this world and, and we and the enemy attacks and we start our our life with God begins to go under it says, he says here in Philippians 3, press, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That phrase, press toward, is present, is present tense, an active voice. Present tense means to be right now, uh, right now to be continuous. It's a continuous state of, of producing this action. So we're con we are to be continuously pressing toward day by day from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, pressing forward, continuous, present tense, right now, moment by moment. Uh, present active voice means we produce the action. We, we are pressing, in our minds, we are going for it. We're not, we're not half-hearted. We're not lackadaisical in our relationship with God. We are going for it. Because it's everything to us. We need to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Deuteronomy 32. We're going to finish this lesson in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 46 and 47. And he says here, And I said, uh, and, sorry, and he said unto them, Set your heart. What? Set your heart unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. Why? Why? Verse 47. For it is not a vain thing for you. Listen. It is never empty and worthless for you to set your heart on the word of God. It is not empty. It is not worthless. For any of us to, to give our hearts to the word of God. Why? Uh, for it is, it is not a vain thing for you. Why? Because it is your life. It is your life. The word of God is to be our life. The, the, our, our prayer, pr praying to God, it is to be our life. Not this world. Not the, not the green grass on the other side of the, of the, of the, of the wall. No. This is our life. The word of God is our life. For it is not a vain thing for you to set your heart on the word of God. Because it is your life. And through this, because of this thing, you shall prolong your days in the land where you go over Jordan to Bethesda. Because of that, we will, we will have a prosperous, a prosperous, a blessed life in this, in this world. And this, the time that we've been given here by God, however long that is. So we set our hearts on the word of God. We stay in the city. We stay behind the wall. We don't venture out. We don't look from the wall out into the world and say, wow, it would be wonderful out there. Look at all the, look at all the flowers and all the sparkly things out there. It would be so much better to live out there than here. Here, I'm always, 
uh, threat of being attacked. No, 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 no. Get behind the wall. Get behind the wall. Stay there in the word of God and be protected. Why? Because it is to be our life. We are to set our minds on the things of God and on his word and to live by the word. All right, we're going to continue. We're going to start in chapter 5 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.